Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Uh, Monday has rolled round again and it is time for a new Daily Race C Strategy Guide. This week we are going to the hills of Sardinia, uh, Road Track B, 15 laps in Group 3 cars, uh, fuel consumption at times 5, tyre wear at times 7 and we have the sole choice of racing hard tyres for this one. Now this is the second time this uh, combination has come around and I think it came around in July this year uh, not long after the Sardinia road track was added to the game and on that occasion it very quickly it became a no stop extreme fuel saving race however that was before the update that implemented shorter pit stops so Going into making this video, uh, I did wonder whether the optimal strategy had changed, which we will soon find out. But this first strategy we're going to look at is the favoured one from the last time the combination came around, which was the no stop extreme fuel saving. And the car that tended to be the best for that was the Porsche uh, RSR GT3 car. So we joined the run here uh, quite late on, we are halfway through lap 14 of the 15 laps. You can see the lap times very consistent there in the mid 21s, actually set our fastest lap uh, on lap 9 there. Before we set a little bit of a target lap on lap 10. But we have the plenty of fuel here uh, as we come towards the end of the penultimate lap uh, before we move on to lap 15. Tire wear not too much of an issue because uh, you're saving fuel so much you tend to be a lot easier on the tires and the fuel saving required in this one is quite extreme and uh, I think it eliminates a lot of cars from doing this strategy. The Porsche uh, is very very good on this track uh, in terms of fuel saving but you still have to change uh, very early uh, your upshifts very early to, to get it done. You can see there the rev counter barely hitting, barely appearing on the screen before we change up here. So as I said uh, this was the optimal strategy and uh, the best car for that combination last time round and it is looking as though it is still pretty good even after uh, all the updates and various physics changes and uh, any bulb changes that may have happened. The Porsche still looking very strong on this combination. Bit of a shame that when I had a little bit of a, a rant last time out that it's just a regurgitation of a combination we've had before. Again, no problems with using the same cars uh, or same type of cars and track but easily change the way the, the race unfolds by changing the settings. Had to put the fuel consumption up to say 6 or 7 for this one, then the non-stop pretty much becomes impossible. Anyways, across the line we come uh, and we managed to keep the lap times in the 21s for the entirety of the race and as the finish pops up we have done 20 minutes and 31.7 for the non-stop in the Porsche. Now I've decided to change things up a little bit uh, for this video rather than just doing all the strategies in the same car I thought I would use some different cars while using different strategies. Now the car we're in now is the 4GT. This car probably could non-stop, it's not as bad on fuel as is made out sometimes. You just have to drive it in a very different way and be a little bit more on top of the fuel mixtures to get a non-stop out of the Ford uh, GT. It's actually very good in fuel mixture 4, loses very little lap time compared to fuel mixture 1. But anyways, what we're going to do for this one is we are just going to drive flat out in the Ford GT, don't worry about saving fuel, make a pit stop, take on whatever fuel we need and see how close we can get to the non-stop time in the Porsche. Now, that opening lap there was about half a second quicker than the Porsche and as we come across the line here, tricky last corner uh, easy to go wide there and get a penalty but as long as you keep two wheels on that kerb 
uh, you won't get a penalty. Uh, one, to, one to keep in mind, I've seen a lot of penalties for that infringement last time out. A 20.9 there for the second lap, and as we come towards the end of the first stint, you see the lap time's not significantly quicker. And the Porsche run wide there, a little bit of a mistake. Not significantly quicker. It's a bit of a strange track, this one, that the fuel saving is uh, quite even to the flat out pushing. There's not a whole lot of lap time gains. I'm not entirely sure why that is. Anyway, we took on a new set of tyres, and you can see we need six laps of fuel to get to the end. And yet, this uh, pit stop is looking pretty long, isn't it? So out we come with the necessary fuel. And that uh, in lap there is a 137.6, which means that that pit stop has cost us 16 seconds to the Porsche. Now, at best, we've maybe gained about 3 seconds over that opening stint. So we jump towards the end of the second stint, halfway through the last lap, in fact. You can see the lap times there for the second stint. We've set our fastest lap on lap 2, we're 120.5. Not massively quicker than the first stint because obviously for the second stint we've had to take on fuel. Uh, so the car's not significantly lighter for this second stint. Certainly at the beginning as compared to, uh, as to what it was at the end of the first stint. So that's why the lap times are not a huge improvement over the first stint. So across the line we come, we've actually, I think we ran out of fuel right on the line in the 4 GT and as the finishing time pops up a 20.39.0 so a full 8 seconds slower than the Porsche Makes me think that that strategy uh, is perhaps one to be discounted So let's jump into another car and try a slightly different strategy We're in the, the Citroen Vision Gran Turismo Group 3 car and for this one we are going to do the necessary fuel saving but come in for a new set of tyres only and get a measure of how long a pit stop is for tyres only you can see significantly shorter whereas we lost 16 seconds in the pit stop in the Ford GT taking on fuel we have only lost uh, 7 seconds there uh, and I should have mentioned when we looked at the 4 GT that the outlap is about 2 seconds slower than a normal lap as well so the, the overall loss there for just pitting for a new set of tyres is around about 9 seconds so we jump forward to the start of the last lap on the second stint here in the Citroen uh, again despite the fresh tyres the lap time's not massively quicker, certainly not going to make up 9 seconds because we're still having to do the fuel saving that we were doing in the first stint uh, and we actually get the fuel a little bit wrong here so we now had to go into fuel mixture 2 for this last lap just to get the car to the end but again my gut feeling is that this strategy just can't topple the non-stop uh, a little bit of, we are a little bit faster in this second stint but as I said nowhere near enough to cover the 9 seconds that a pit stop takes so with that in mind I thought well what if we did the fuel saving in the first stint came in for a pit stop took on a new set of tyres and maybe added some fuel so we could go flat out in the second stint what would be the cost of taking on that fuel and how much faster would the car be being able to drive flat out? So I started a new race, burned fuel for a couple of laps which was great fun just to get the car down to the sort of fuel that it would be if you were making a pit stop. So we're taking a new set of tyres on here and we are going to add 20% of fuel so we can go a lot more aggressive in the second stint. Now that pit time there stops the clock at 16.7 seconds. When we weren't taking any fuel on, the clock was stopped at 12.4. So taking on 20% of fuel has cost 4 seconds. 
And as we come out and we do a couple of flying laps there, we can see the first one a 20 point five, the second one a 20.8, but the optimal down there at a 20.3, so the car is a good bit quicker running flat out, but again, I just don't think it's enough uh, to counter the non-stop. Let's uh, remember that if we do run that strategy, uh, the pit time is going to take about, cost about 13 seconds, and again, you're maybe going about a second, a sec even if you're going a second, or even if you're going two seconds a lap quicker to the second stick, you're not going to catch an on-stopper who makes no mistakes. So this one, unfortunately, despite my high hopes that uh, a different strategy would come to the fore than last time this one out, it's looking like an on-stop, you know, which is going to reduce the number of cars that are going to be able to do the optimal strategy. Porsche, the RCZ, the Citroen can do it, the Mercedes AMG will probably be able to do it, but the fuel saving is pretty extreme, uh, even more extreme than Spa uh, a couple of weeks ago, which is not going to be everyone's cup of tea. Uh, but you don't have to do that, you can You can just, you can drive the race whatever way you want at the end of the day, if you want to make the pit stop and take on the fuel and just have some fun, put yourself in the mid-pack, get some overtaking done, get some racing under your belt, then that's an option. But the, the optimal strategy is the non-stop. So for those looking for the best results and to build up for your uh, driver rating, that's going to be the way to go, I'm afraid. As I said, not everybody's cup of tea. Uh, and I'm a bit annoyed with Polyphony Digital that they've not given us some different settings. Could have put uh, soft tyres, uh, tyre wear, kept it at time 7, put the fuel up to time 7, eliminates the non-stop, brings in a lot more cars to the fore, but that's the way it is. Anyway, I hope this video has been useful, uh, some helpful information in there for, the, for you drivers. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I'll maybe see you on the track and I shall definitely see you for the next video which will hopefully be Spa eh, Nations Cup FIA race sometime on maybe Tuesday. Thanks for watching now. Goodbye.